Hi guys, today's March 9th, 10th? No, March 11th. Yeah, 311. Um, I know a lot of people have had um, words or whatever talking about 311. Um, I want to tell you of some things that's been going on. And I have a Bible study I want to get out, which is really important. Um, so I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead me through this because this is going to be kind of difficult. There's been a lot of people coming upon my posts, um, on my Facebook and other watchmen as I have seen that they are trying to get the word out about how close we are about coming, going home and people want to consider it date setting. Well, the first off, May, March 20th is an absolute huge watch date and we all know that, um, we have um, Putin's scientist, which is the Russian leader, that has said that there is going to be an earthquake um, that on March 20th, which is Purim. And it is going to hit at the Madrid fault line in California on. If that be the case, that would be the splitting of America. Um, it is also the spring equinox. It is also... Um, Jesus's real birthday, um, which they have found in different things, March 20th, the 6th BC. Um, do I 100% know that? No, but if so, I think that's no coincidence. And then also that day, we have the supermoon, which is the third one. We've had one in January, one in February, and this is the last one in March. And it's the last one of our time. And it is also the day that the Mashiach is to come. As, like I said, Rabbi Cahoots met a year prior to his death. So, therefore, we are here. The plagues of Exodus happened in March. And March is also known as Mar. And Mar is known as Mars, which is red, dusty planet. Um, which also, in, in return, stands for judgment. Okay. So, I'm going to read... I'm going to tell you, um, the other day, actually on March 7th, um, I've been working for someone for a while and, um, her real name is Tamara and I keep getting in my spirit tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll love you tomorrow. And I know that sounds weird, but it says it's only a day away. Now, tomorrow, um, was practicing some type of witchcraft and, um, for a while, I've been sitting there talking to her about God and, you know, about how to come to Christ. And she ended up talking about how her husband is part of, or he got asked if he wanted to be part of the Freemasons, okay? And um, a friend of mine was, we were all three connected in a way. And it was because she has specific answers that I could not answer about reptilians and hybrids and things. Um, I did not believe in this stuff for a long time until I personally met my boss. Uh, she does live in town. And um, it took me about two weeks, I'd say, or close to it, yeah, of praying and everything um, before I went over there and decided to do anything. Well, she come over and she has a friend that's a lesbian. She's married to a woman. And... Um, I started to, she, my boss comes in and says, so, um, how do I get saved? How do I get this stuff out of my home? And so we had a long Bible study, well, kind of, and I was sitting there opening up my Bible, reading scriptures and stuff to her. And I was talking about repentance and repentance means turning around and walking away, never to return, turn back to that sin. Um, so, and so she's like, so you're telling me that I would have to divorce my wife in order for God to forgive me and for me to be saved. And I was like, well, technically, yes, because you want to, you know, repent and be washed in the blood and everything. And she's like, well, I'm just going to continue living this way. So I was like, all right, she started getting upset. And, you know, when people start getting upset, that's when you just dust your feet off, say what you got to say. Then I went and I, um. I went over with her to another man named Paul and these are biblical names and he knew about Mara's situation and I went over there because he lives across the street from her and I was there 
I'd say 30, 35 minutes. I spoke in tongues. I anointed the whole outside, including her. And I had a dream um, two weeks prior to me doing this about me anointing her husband and her home and things. And I knew that this had to have been God's way of giving me the special gift. Well, what I felt and what I seen was the, a demon. And it wasn't anything that she said. It was peaceful. And she confessed Christ and gave her heart to God. Um, she called me the other day and asked me simply just to pray for her. Um, her parents are Scientologists. And so there's been a lot of wickedness going around that she did not understand. So that was a major blessing. And my point to this is um, I have cast out demons out of my own home. Okay, I speak in tongues, I can do that. But I never thought that I would be used in a way to be able to go to somebody else and do that. And like I said, I was really nervous because I didn't want them attaching to me. Because if you are not prayed up through the Holy Spirit, you know, and have your have the full armor of God on, they will attach to you. And you do not want to mess with the underworld because it is very, very dangerous. And so, therefore, um, I, I kept getting revealed, you know, different things. And Acts 2, um, 17 through 21 says this, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, okay? The sons and daughters are us, the ones who have given our, our life to Christ. It is those who have been circumcised, born again, believers he said he's going to pour his spirit out on us he didn't mean the whole world he meant on his sons and his daughters okay where um it is the chosen ones and your young men will see visions your old men shall dream dreams and i believe that this was part of um his outpouring um towards the last days because we know anytime any day jesus is coming back um and i'm going to get more into that and then Acts 10, 45, and those of the circumcision, which is me, you who have been cut off from the world, who have been born again, who believed, okay, were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Okay. Um, I know this is a, a Pentecost um, thing, but in, in reference to what? I went through um, me being cut off. They were astonished in the peace that they were able to feel back in their home about the um, reuniting with Christ with the full understanding. And so it was joy unspeakable for them because this, this, they saw God do a miracle through me and if it wasn't for God that lived inside me, I would not be able to do this. I wouldn't have this gift. I wouldn't even have this understanding. Okay, so now let's move on. All right, to Matthew 24. And um, this is very in-depth. So bear with me. And he says, Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Okay, there's two references here. The end of the age, if you look up in the Strongs, it means the Messianic age. And the Messianic age is the future period of time on earth in which the Messiah will reign and bring universal peace and brotherhood without any evil. Okay, and then the literal translation of the Hebrew word Mashiach which is to come, is Messiah, meaning anointed one, which refers to a ritual of consecrating someone or something by putting holy oil upon it. The Sanhedrin have said that their Messiah is coming on Purim, March 20th. And then they spoke, this is not my words, okay? They spoke stating April 9th will be the beginning, which is Passover, the tribulation. Now, like I said, I was just led this study. I do not know the day or hour. 
I do know we are very, very, very unbelievably close, okay? And March 9th, 10th, they're saying it is going to be the peace deal that is going to be announced, okay? So, um, let's read Mark 13, 8. Oh, I totally... Okay, I thought I had this marked. Okay. Mark 13, 8. Oh, I did. Okay. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, now, in the Strong's, um, G5604, it means original importeth or the pains of the woman in travail, troubles and sorrows, which lead us to Isaiah 66, 7, which says before she was in labor, she gave birth before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Now, what can this possibly mean? This male child that is going to be delivered um, okay, we know Jesus Christ coming, but before all this stuff happens, there's a Messiah that's coming, like in Daniel 9, okay, 24 through 27, and it does specifically state in a given time, the given period of when he is coming, Okay, he's exactly on time. Okay. It's 70 weeks, which is determined upon his people. Okay, which is the Jewish people and for his holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, uh, to make peace, right? To bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up vision and prophecy because God gave us that 70 years it is going to be sealed up because it's the time of Jacob's trouble that is coming. He specifically gave us the seasons and I can prove that. And it says, and to anoint the most holy. Didn't I just read to you in Matthew 24, 3 about the Mashiach, that which is to come, that they, he's the anointed one that they have been looking for. Okay. That he is the one that is going the antichrist okay or the the one who is um uh the the who will go into perdition okay because the son of man comes and then he goes into perdition let's read first thessalonians 5 3 now this is going to be amazing for when they say peace and safety and peace and safety in the strongs means a state of national tranquility Okay, worldwide peace, one world order coming. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a woman or upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape, which is the tribulation. Okay, but now I'm going to read you verse one now. Okay, of First Thessalonians 5 going to be first one i'm going to read you this that way you all understand how how we the church of philadelphia will not be here it says but concerning the times and season brethren now what does brethren mean in g80 of the strongs it means a fellow believer united to one another by the bond of affection christians you understand that it means Christians, those who are bound with love in Christ. He is talking to us Christians. We do not need this, this writing about the tribulous times is not for us because we have that understanding because we have Christ in us. So we don't need to know, we, we don't, we don't need to be concerned. Okay. Because we already know, because we were given the 70 years when all this prophecy is to be fulfilled. Okay, and then it says, no need I write, okay, and G112 says, which means to describe or the use of those which stand written in the sacred books of the Old Testament. You understand that 
this is talking about there is no need that stuff like in Daniel and in Isaiah and in Jeremiah, how they all come together in, in the 70 year prophecy that they don't need to write to us about it because we have that understanding because God opened our eyes and gave us that. He already told us the season, what, what all this is going to happen. Okay. And then, um, I'm going to skip that part here. So I'm going to read you some more things here. And it says, all right, second Thessalonians two, one and two, it says now, brethren, Christians, we beseech you, brethren, you Christians by the coming or the return specifically of Christ. Okay. Whom will come to punish Jerusalem or finally the wicked or the arrival of the future visible return from heaven of Jesus to raise the dead, hold the last judgment and set it formally and gloriously the kingdom of God, our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering Okay, which stands for the church, which is in 1577, also a Hebrew word, Q-A-H-A-L, which is Quahal, um, 6951, which means assembly, which is the gathering together unto him. Okay, rapture. Okay, um, for these times, and I will show you even some more because it's, it's just non-debatable about how he is coming and he specifically now this is what's happening with a lot of these um people believers in christ who have set their um they they were watching for so long and then they just stopped watching oh we have another three years or we're going to go through the tribulation or something like that so i'm going to read you verse two it says that ye be not soon shaken which is stirred up in the spirit or in mind, okay, which is in the wisdom and knowledge, or be troubled by the spirit, which is power of knowing, nor by the doctrine or the word, nor by the epistle or the message as from or uh, the reason um, as the day of Christ is present. You understand, we those who are not understanding about the times and stuff, they are worried about the tribulation. They're worried about getting left behind. They're shaken in their spirit and mind. And so therefore they don't, they're not watching. They're, they're watching for other events to occur. They're not waiting on Jesus Christ. They have lost their, their light to shine. Um, and then last but not least, Revelation 3.10, and I will never stop saying this, okay? Um, because... Thou hast kept, okay, and I'm going to read this slowly, okay, kept in the Strong's 5083 means guarded because we have guarded the word, the preaching, the works of my patience, the waiting the, of trials and suffering. I also would guard you and watch over you, my house, my church, from the hour, okay, 5610, which is a certain definite time or season fixed by natural law and returning with the revolving year. Meaning, Christ comes, takes us, and tribulous times come right then. Boom. Okay, which is the revolving year. It's going to be judgment year after year after that. Okay, um, and then it says, it is an instant at the point of time of temptation, which is rebellion against God to test the love of those people toward God, trial of man's fidelity of the condition of things or a mental state by which we are enticed to sin or to a lapse from faith and holiness. Okay. This which shall come upon the whole world, which is those who inhabit in the whole universe to be tried and tempted of one's faith to inflict evil upon one in order to prove his character and steadfastness of his faith to them that dwell upon the earth. Okay. This is proof that the 70 years, okay, is the end of the church age and the messianic era will begin. Now, hypothetically, let's just say that um, how it says that he shall make a covenant for one week and in the midst of that week, he shall break it. Week 
represents in the Strong's means um, Shavuot or Pentecost. Okay, and there were seventy Shavuot um, or Pentecost, which um, this year of May fourteenth, two thousand nineteen, will make it seventy one years. Seventy one Shavuot, and he didn't give us seventy one. He said seventy. Bam. Okay. Now, us leaving prior to the tribulus times coming. Listen, um, if they announce this peace thing on April 9th or 10th, it means, it means you, okay, if you add a year um, to that, it'd go to the next Pentecost, okay, or one week. But we know that a year is 12 months. You split that year in half to six months of this piece before he decides to break it and say, no, 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 this ain't going to happen. Okay. This is a hypothetical thing. Then on October 8th and 9th, that, that is the day of atonement. Okay. Which is, um, Yom Kippur. Okay. And which is a repentance of your sins. Why would they be repenting of their sins? As God says, he's going to sit up there and laugh at them because they would have accepted the Messiah, the Mashiach, the false, false God. Okay. So as always pray over this and uh, no, we are very, very, very close. And um, I will probably have one more video here shortly. And um, after that, I'm praying we're home. So, uh, we're on borrowed time. If you're not saved, get saved. Um, and, um, that's about it. Jesus is coming. God bless y'all.